planes, trains and automobiles. Yes, I love them as much as the next person. But in our rush to get from A to B, I can't help feeling we risk missing so much. I'm Miriam Margulies and I love to travel. Recently, my work's taken me to some rather exotic locations. But many of my most precious memories are set much closer to home. There's so much of our small island I still haven't seen. So in this series, we're touring the country courtesy of the TV archives, discovering what the small screen can tell us about our green and pleasant land. On the way, I've no doubt we'll meet some colourful characters and encounter forgotten ways of life. We'll also be dishing out fascinating and unusual facts about the places we visit, absolutely free of charge. So keep a lookout. And just think, you don't even need to leave your armchair because this is my Armchair Britain. Today we're dropping in on the city that gave us football nets, Britain's first drive-in bank and the crossword. Nine letters beginning with L. Any ideas? No. OK, here are some clues. They used to call it the capital of Ireland, so you'd always be around a lot of music. It's got everything that's uh, necessary. It's got good residents. It's got excellent types of people, friendly type of people. A lot of happy memories for me. The dull. It's got two good football teams as well. Yes, it's Liverpool. How'd you guess? This is Liverpool, home of pop music, ships and expatriate Irishmen. A city where you can visit the UK's oldest Chinatown. <laughs> tuck into a delicious Beatles-themed lunch. Eleanor Rigby salad and twist and shout kebab. Then admire the beauty and splendour of a super lamb banana. I've seen the super fifth banana. The Liverpool banana, the Everton banana. Yes, that's a statue of a half lamb, half banana. Keep up. Hey, get us! Oh, yes, there's a lot going on in Liverpool. The capital of culture in 2008 is Liverpool. Yeah! Not many people know that I am, in fact, half Scouse. My mother was born in Liverpool in the Walton Road, and from a very young age, she passed on to me a great love for Liverpool and affection for its people. It's a fantastic. Thanks, love. Thanks, Thank yeah. So please join me as I, almost a Liverpudlian, take you round my home from home. Probably after you've seen this programme, you might consider taking your holidays here in Liverpool. We'll be celebrating everything that makes magical Merseyside so special. Is there any more champagne, Mr. Rick? A city that sings like no other, <laughs> swings like no other, speaks like no other. Cushy, laugh and sound, and my one. And jokes like no other. Somebody once said you have to be a comedian to come from Liverpool. Of course, that is true. Are you all enjoying yourselves? Yeah. I'll soon put a stop to that. <laughs> Let's get stuck in. Can someone let me change for the ferry? <laughs> now, any visit to Liverpool has to start here, on the world famous Mersey Ferry. Every weekday, thousands of people commute to and from Liverpool by a ferry boat which chugs across the Mersey. It only costs a few pence and the journey takes less than ten minutes. Not a bad way to travel to work. The Mersey Ferry has inspired a song, an album and a film. Not many commutes can boast that. The city gents heading for their offices across in Liverpool ride there on water but walk every inch of the way. Morning. Morning. How far do you actually walk in the mornings as you as you walk around the ferry? Have you ever thought? Have yes, I have. I would think about a quarter of a mile. It's unique. It's probably one of the only six ferries of its kind in the world. And this is the exercise you get in the morning? Yes. And do you, walk, like do you walk around the deck on the way back as well? Oh, right? yes. Look at that. Blue socks and bicycle clips. Is this a ferry or a catwalk? To a scouser, the river without its ferries is like a London without Tower Bridge or a Glasgow without its steamers going doom the water on the Clyde. The ferry certainly inspired late great comedy legend Ken Dodd, whom I loved to wax lyrical about his home city. We say, welcome to Liverpool, the greatest city in the world. 
Yeah, I was going to ask you about this skyline that so many people, even if they haven't been to Liverpool, know so well. The liver bird there, for example. Well, what's the story of the liver bird? The liver bird is that it's half eagle, half cormorant, and half budgie. Hmm, not sure about your maths there, Ken. On its twin steeples are perched two gigantic liver birds. They're mythical, and they look something like pelicans with bad disposition. And the local belief is that Liverpool took its name from the liver bird. I don't know about that, but I understand that the birds are known as Bertie and Bella. And legend has it that if the liver birds ever face each other, the city will cease to exist. And while we're talking about the liver birds, I think it's high time for a Liverpool fact. These emblems of Liverpool sit upon two enormous towers, both of which house the biggest clocks in the country. Their sheer size meant that before they were installed, the full board of directors of the Liver Association ate lunch off one of them. How did they find a tablecloth to fit? All right there, Blue, how's your belly for spots? Sounds a pound count, you shall. The thing I've always loved about Liverpool is the fabulously unique Scouse accent. And there's a good chance you'll encounter it down the pub. Do you know, I was out the other night in the Alto Baxi there, pal. Anyway, I drove into the punch and it was jumping. You know what I mean, like? So I thought, sod this, so I shut down to the Al Cabin and got myself a couple of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's people outside of Liverpool who think that Scouse is difficult to understand. Thankfully, the locals are always more than happy to help translate. They'll say, hey, La, and everyone is known as La. You know, mean and lad. You don't say, oh, no, it's no good we say, oh, it's last. My own dad, like, if he does anything, he goes, la <laughs> You know, it just means, you know, I don't care, yeah. like, la <laughs> I, was, I always said, oh, he's got a cob on. He's a cross of that. I said, oh, he's got a cob on. Well, if anyone collapses, you just say, it's no more black, it's drunk. <laughs> yeah. He could be lying on the floor, stiff, but he's still through a wobbly. <laughs> If the pub talk is a bit much for you, don't worry. Liverpudlians love a barroom sing song. We speak with an accent exceedingly rare. Meet under a statue exceedingly bare. If you want a cathedral, we've got one to stay. Tell me where in my Liverpool home. That's right. Liverpool boasts not one but two of the most distinctive cathedrals in the country. This ecclesiastical Everest is Liverpool Cathedral. The first is the magnificent Cathedral Church of Christ, the largest cathedral in Britain. This is one of the biggest cathedrals in the world. Its scale was meant to reflect the wealth and standing of the city it dominates. Liverpool's Protestant Cathedral was started as long ago as 1904. It's made of sandstone, all quarried locally, and large band saws cut through huge blocks of it at the rate of about a foot an hour. Look at that. That's great, isn't it? Ravens with a sense of humour. Got nest in my head. There's only one way to shoo away those birds, which brings us on to our next Liverpool fact. Where are my earplugs? I couldn't leave without seeing these. The heaviest peal of bells in the world. And they're just about to start ringing, so I'm out of here. Thankfully for Liverpool's Catholic population, the city's other cathedral isn't a long walk. Back over to Doddy to fill us in. And this here, this is, this is very interesting because this street here, this is Hope Street. Hope Street, and it's a very good name really because right at the very end of the street is a cathedral. The... Now that's the Metropolitan Cathedral, the Catholic Yes, cathedral. that's the Roman Catholic Cathedral, sometimes affectionately known as the Mersey Funnel. The Mersey Funnel at the other end of the street here we have the Anglican Cathedral. And this, so there you have, you have two cathedrals joined by a street called Hope. The Liverpool Metropolitan Cathedral was completed in 1967, and its unique design has earned it a range of nicknames, such as the Mersey Funnel and the Pope's Launching Pad. In fact, Liverpudlians can be a tricky lot to impress when it comes to new buildings. That is the beacon the city's newest, tallest, and most impressive landmark. It's 380 feet high, and they say that from its tip you can see the mountains of North Wales. But what exactly is it? Well, I know what it is today. It's a headache. Three. 
it gets a high wind and blows it down, it's only made of, of concrete. It's absolutely nonsense. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yes, that's what that thing is. A useless waste of money. <laughs> Well, I'm here every day for about four, six years. I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, let me tell you. This is St John's Beacon, now known as the Radio City Tower. Built in 1969, the revolving restaurant at the top really got some locals in a spin, while others saw the funny side. The tower restaurant revolves 450 feet above the city. The only trouble with revolving restaurants is if you miss your sausage the first time, you have to wait 20 minutes before it comes around again. <laughs> The people of Liverpool love a joke, and there's nothing quite like the Scouse sense of humour. The Scousers are very quick-witted. They've all got jokes to tell you. Oh, yeah. Yes, the eternal... I mean, they are the eternal comics, aren't they? You know yourself, they've always got an answer, haven't they? You know, yeah. the old gang. I mean, does this bus stop at the pier head? There'll be a big splash if it doesn't, you know, <laughs> and all that. And it was Arthur Askey, you know, I mean, real famous son of the city, who said... He, he is the original one who said, you have to be a comedian to live there. But Liverpool's the place, isn't it? But well, why? I mean, why not Newcastle, Huddersfield, or Manchester, or Birmingham? Well, they haven't got the Mersey, you see. It's the Mersey air. <laughs> it's the air of the River Mersey that does it. In fact, everybody in Liverpool is a comedian. And everybody in Liverpool seems to have this great sense of fun. My mum said to me, Dad, this morning, hey, why did you come home after drunk last night? He said, uh, I ran out of money. <laughs> One thing Liverpudlians always do is keep laughing, even through adversity. An old Liverpool saying is that you have to have a sense of humour to live here. Liverpudlians are used to times being hard, and they crack jokes as a way of rising above life's tragedies. We've got a different sense of humour because we've had to rough it. We've had to get over four bread strikes. <laughs> It's terrible, that last bread strike. Everyone's sitting down a pier head with a pigeon suit on. One in five of the Merseyside population is now out of work. In some parts of Liverpool, half the people of working age are unemployed. If you wear Maggie Thatcher's new way to solve the unemployment crisis, she's put the school leaving age up to 52. <laughs> People will say, you know, we'll put you on file, and when a vacancy sort of arises, we'll let you know, you know? And nothing happens? No. Well, have you thought about any of these jobs in Germany that are advertised here, Kat? Joking. I couldn't afford the bus fare. <laughs> yeah. Scousers know how to find joy in even the most serious subjects. Unemployment, poverty, even a pet budgie and poor health. So, anyway, she got a vet in to have a look at it and Shep, the dog, followed her in, and uh, he goes to the cage to get the budgie out, opens the cage, the budgie flies out, alights on the mat, the dog jumps on it, and no budgie. He picks it up, the vet, looks at it, he said, this budgie's not egg-bound. He said, it's got a tumour, and with that, he just threw it in the fire. So Madge says, good heavens, she says, my lads will go mad, what did you do that for? He said, well, cremation is the most hygienic thing, madam. That will be seven and six. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P., my feathered friend. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Everywhere you look in Liverpool, from the pubs to the streets, Scousers have got the gift of the gab. Stolen property. A bit of knock-off. Two blokes up. Hey, come on, the fellow who made this. He's out at half past four this morning. I've worked some money to bury the poor bugger with it. Come on, get your purse, old girl. Give them off an area. You're 59 pence now, you tennis racket. Miss these barbers, you miss your way out. Hey! <laughs> yourself on telly. One thing I've always admired about this city is the incredible community spirit you find on Merseyside. It's great because there's another language. This is an area yeah. of languages. The one which has been gold probably since the Victorian times is the language of knock on the wall. It's like bang bang if you've got any sugar, whatever. Yeah. Oh, it's not okay, Victorian, right, right, but right, you know, right. if you can, <laughs> or it's like bang bang, turn the music down, whatever yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's all right, Zachy. And they've got friends with the woman next door. Some people are all friendly in the neighbourhoods, but the woman next door is very friendly, you know. Yes, they're a friendly lot in Liverpool. Just look at this. Not so long ago, something as routine as doing your washing was a great social activity, an opportunity to bond with your neighbours. 
One of the most interesting achievements of the council was to establish, over a hundred years ago, public wash houses where, even now, thousands of Liverpool housewives bring their weekly wash. And though these old prams are the most popular means of transport, you'll often see the older ones carrying the bundles on their heads. After all that hard work, it's time to relax. There are cafes attached to the wash houses as well, so many women almost regard the wash house as their club, and they don't have to worry about their children, who are looked after in the creche upstairs by experienced attendants. And if the kids get sick of the washroom creche, there's always the community courtyard. The Tenneys tenement blocks were built in the 1930s as a great scheme to rehouse the poor of the city of Liverpool. They do have one big thing to recommend them, a fantastic community spirit centred on the courtyard. Here, even the youngest children can play all day. Through thick and thin, the people of Liverpool watch out for each other at any age. Do you like the slide? Oh. Do you? Oh. It's nice to play on and that. Uh, when you live somewhere else, there's no grounds and that, uh, and there's no bars to swing on. Sometimes he runs out of the swings, onto the road. And once you nearly got run over, didn't you? Hey, cheeky. A door. 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 And we come from the here. old street, didn't we? And yeah, we come yeah. from Old Yellard Street, off Scotland Road, to here, in 1936. So we've always... So we've always clung together. You know, together, sort real... of thing. You know, you'd always had a friend and a neighbour. A fella from the Corpy, just out of planning school, has told us that we've got to go right out of Liverpool. Unfortunately, between the 1950s and the 1970s, these neighbourhoods were frequently broken up when Liverpudlians moved out of the city to overspill estates in nearby suburbs. Kirby, or the Ponderosa, as he's sometimes called, Kirby, and Speak, they're great people. They, they, um, you know, they've, they've come out of the town, and a lot of them uh, wish they were back in the town, a lot of them are homesick now, but generally speaking, they're, they're smashing people out there, and uh, smashing is the right word. No, they're, they're lovely people, but of course people gag about them. Liverpool comics do. And uh, they say, if you pay the rent two weeks on the run, the policeman comes to find out where you got the money from. Cheeky Ken. Of course, like any major city, Liverpool's had its problems with crime, as we see in this 1965 documentary. A few months ago, when we had our general survey, the crime in this city was the highest in its history, and in fact, the highest in the country outside the Metropolitan Police. However, the Liverpool Police had an ingenious method of cracking down on crime in the city, which gives us our next Liverpool fact. We place television cameras at vantage points along the main buildings of the city, and we allied the cameras to commandos. Control to Bravo, two men acting in a suspicious manner on the corner of Hawke Street, Copsers Hill. Question please, over. That's right. Liverpool City Police were one of the first constabulary forces to experiment with CCTV, a revolutionary idea back in the mid-60s. Another of our troubles was general hooliganism. Mind you, some of the force's methods during that era were a little more straightforward. Now, we dealt with this crown quite effectually with dogs. <laughs> As an ancient port, Liverpool's always been a melting pot of different cultures. In fact, it has the oldest black community in Europe. Where'd you come from? Born here, but my dad comes from Sierra Leone. Your dad's from Sierra Leone? Yeah. You... A diverse range of nationalities have made Liverpool their home. From the Chinese to the Greeks. Oh, just think of their crockery bill. Yet one migrant population has perhaps had more influence on Merseyside than any other. We had a community of 
like Irish immigrants from years ago, aren't we? But it all boils down, like, you know, it's hot pot, isn't it? You know, Irish stew. And Irish migrants to Liverpool are partially to thank for giving Liverpool its most famous dish. Over to TV's greatest ever Irishman to explain. I promised you a tale from Liverpool, the capital of Ireland. Well, I went up there this morning <laughs> and found my way to the festival gardens where a bunch of people were doing things in a very, very big way. Just the thing for a summer's day in the festival gardens in Liverpool. The biggest pan of scouse in the world. Scouse, the delicious national food and indeed drink of Liverpool. It's six feet tall and it's eight feet in diameter and it contains about 6,000 helpings which we'll be hoping to sell at 50p a portion on behalf of children in need. Scouse, the food of Liverpool. Once so popular in the city, it became a slang term for Liverpudlians. For any aspiring Scousers out there, here's the recipe. And what goes into it? Oh, well, we, we start off with about 800 pounds of uh, pure lean meat then about two tonne of potatoes, about 450 pounds of carrots, 450 pounds of onions, 30 pounds of leek, 30 pounds of celery. I shall try the first mouthful. Plucky to the last. And to make enough scouse for two, just divide those quantities by 3,000 and bobs your uncle. Delicious. Now, I'll just check there's nothing important about Liverpool I've missed out. Let me think. If only these girls would stop screaming, I'd be able to concentrate. The Beatles. In one meteoric year, they've led the way from the cellars of Liverpool to the national limelight. Oh, yes, the Beatles. You might have heard the name before. For any younger viewers or anyone living under a rock for the last 50 years, let's remind ourselves of the lineup. George Harrison, lead guitar. John Lennon, rhythm guitar. Ringo Starr, drums. Paul McCartney, bass guitar. At the time, the Beatles weren't really my thing, but now I'd give almost anything to have seen the Fab Four at the Cavern Club, where they played almost 300 times before making it big. There were over 300 groups in Liverpool in 1961. You just had to be in a group. One of the first things people used to ask you when they met you for the first time was, hey there, lad, what group are you in? And if so, what's it called? We used to play on this stage in the cavern and Later, they sold the pieces of it, the floorboards, for two shillings a time because another group that played here just happened to be called the Beatles. One of the most exciting things about the 1960s was the explosion of youth culture, which just didn't exist before then. The term teenager was only invented in the 50s, and the best thing was the older generation just didn't get it. Liverpool setting the fashion in Beatle hairdos that baffle you as to a person's gender. Hmm, man, woman? It's too difficult to say. Of course, it wasn't always easy being a Beatle. Built up, you know, so much. There was about 200 kids all around the door. And they were just peeping through the window and knocking, you know. It sent us a lot of jelly babies and chocolates and things. But the, um, the main trouble is they, they tend to throw them at us <laughs> when we're on stage. And uh, once I got one in my eye, which wasn't very nice. In fact, I've never been the same since. <laughs> Liverpool's musicians have produced 56 UK number one hits, more than any other city in the world. No wonder the Guinness Book of Records named Liverpool the world capital city of pop. The Beatles are surely Liverpool's greatest export, and the boys never lost their scouse roots. Paul, well, I don't know whether you know, but Mr Edward Heath, the Lord Privy Seal, has said that he couldn't distinguish the other night what you were saying as Queen's English. Are you going to lose some of your Liverpool dialect for the Royal Show? No, but, you know, we don't all speak like the BBC. <laughs> no, we don't all speak like that, do we? But I can come up north. Well, really with that, all I can do, lads, is to uh, wish you lots and lots of luck at uh, Royal Show. Thank Shore. you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so a lot. Much. Jolly good. The Beatles live on everywhere in Liverpool, proud sons of the city. But it wasn't just teenage girls who sang along to Beatles hits. Oh yes, it's time to talk football. And few cities around the world have a more illustrious football heritage than Liverpool. Between them, 
Liverpool and Everton have won 27 league titles, 12 FA Cups and 5 European Cups. I'm a huge football fan, but even if you're not, you must know that's impressive. Now, Liverpool is a working-class city. People here live from pay packet to pay packet, from weekend to weekend. The big point of the day off is the match on Saturday afternoon at Goodison Park or Anfield. Take Anfield. They meet here on the cup, 20,000 men, women and kids, straight from the streets. It's not just going there to watch a football match, it's really a form of worship. Worship of a great city by the people. Nowhere is the city's love affair with the beautiful game more apparent than on the Spion Cop, or the Cop for short, the most famous stand at Anfield, Liverpool Stadium. You just can't describe it, it's just great, you know. It's just fabulous. It's just brilliant, all the atmosphere and everything. It's too good to be true. But where did the name the Spion Cop come from? These Liverpool fans will know. Why is it called the Spine Cop, cop over the ma a mountain? Over a mountain. The Spine Cop, I, I don't know. Got a slice, eh? I'm on it. I don't know. I don't know. You get a good view, don't you? Yeah, Not bad. you have a great sing. No? Well, luckily for them, here's another one of our Liverpool facts. Well, the Spine Cop is actually an Afrikaans word. It means a good speck, a good place to stand. In, in fact, it was a hill fought over in the Boer War in South Africa, and many Liverpool regiments were involved and that name came back. Calm down, Everton fans. We haven't forgotten you. We'll keep a welcome on the Mersey. We'll keep a welcome in the town for the team that's always winning and they never let us down. Yes, there are two football teams on Merseyside and I think it's safe to say there's absolutely no rivalry between supporters of Liverpool and Everton. I love to hear you Evertonians rattle on about a load of flipping garbage. He's a far better keeper than any fella that you've got. OK, maybe a bit. That's a League Cup. Last time Everton won it. And is that you? That's me. That's me drinking champagne out of it. You don't have to go far in the city before you stumble across an aspiring football superstar. Would you like to play for Liverpool? Yeah! yeah. All right, then, go. Why would you like to play for them? The money and the thing of going abroad and round the country. Can be famous just for the honour? Do you think you'll frighten the, uh, the teams who come and play here? Yeah, yeah, yeah certainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ask no, no God, ask no. It's worth the gold star as soon as they come out. Yeah. Why, why do you think it is that you boys here in Liverpool give so much more noisy support to your team than any other people? Got big mouths. Big mouths and big hearts. That's Liverpool. Fare thee well, a prince's landing stage. River Mersey, fare thee well. Liverpudlians love a joke, they love a sing song, they love music, they love each other. And most of all, they love their city. Well, who can blame them? Thanks for coming to Liverpool. Yeah.